Hey, what's going on, fam? So just another video real quick to talk about the resurrection or the attempted resurrection of the Pan Babblers. So as you all know, when I first restarted on my channel, because I had been doing my channel and the type of stuff I've been talking about before ADOS, and I'm still talking about the same thing. I was talking about not voting and other things that we're all on code about. That certain uh, suspected Democratic shows are now deviating from. Go watch the first video on my channel and see what it was about if you don't believe me. See who I was talking about. See what I was saying. See the questions I was asking. Why are black people voting? Even though that that videos, those early videos were kind of more, a lot more rant. Even though my videos now are kind of rambling and rants. That's why I call them rants a lot. Um, they were a lot more rambling then because I was kind of uh, still a little bit newer to making my channel obviously but as you guys know one one of the first videos i made after my original break was the ados versus pan-africanism videos and you know that i ended up engaging and going back and forth with the pan babblers but at one point it was clear that we were just simply not going to agree i was not going to convince them to stop being pan babblers they were not going to convince me to get off my lineage square However, the reason why I'm talking about them one more time is because one of them has come back to me on my channel and is challenging me to a debate. And at first I was open to the debate, but as I started to talk to the brother, uh, he kind of exposed his talking points and he started lying more after he had already lied on me before. And I'm not going to engage with that because it's not, it's, there's no constructive goal. You have no intention to convert to ADOS or FBA, no matter what I say. And I have no intention to convert to pan babblism. So, why will we debate? Because you see, the pan babblers, because of the fact that ADOS and FBA had a split, they are swooping in like COINTELPRO vultures trying to capitalize on black division. And I'm too much of a student of history. Despite the lies that Pan Babblers tell about us, to allow that to happen. Every black movement in history has had division in it because the Pan Babblers think that they're going to use some new narrative to say that ADOS's own divisive tactics turned on them. So, brother, tell me, did Elijah Muhammad's and Malcolm X's divisive tactics turn on them? If they did, why were you co-signing an NOI troll who want that same NOI member? His name is Brian Crawford. He writes for The Final Call, who wrote all these slanderous articles about ADOS and the NOI's paper, The Final Call. Why were you co-signing him when he was attacking me if the NOI has the same divisive tactics that ADOS has since Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad fell apart, since Farrakhan and Khalid Muhammad fell apart? What about Patrice Lumumba and the fact that he was betrayed by one of his agents? So whether the division is because of, co because of COINTELPRO agents or because people just disagree, it has happened in every single black movement. And I'm, I'm wondering if certain people in the movement, in the ADOS movement, were COINTELPRO agents or, or Democratic SHIELD agents. So did Patrice Lumumba, because he was betrayed by his lieutenant, was he fought? Did he fall prey to his own divisive tactics? Did Marcus Garvey, who was turned on by people like W.E.B. Du Bois, and even though they weren't the same movement, they were rivaling similar movements, a lot like ADOS and FBA are. Were they? Eat, was he eaten by his own divis divisive tactics? Hmm. Was Fred Hampton? And the Panthers, when there was poison pen writ letters being written to each other, and they were debating and disputing and having arguments, did they fall prey to their own divisive tactics? This is a weak-ass talking point that can be easily debunked by people in history. Every, by students of history, which the Pan Babblers always claim or tell us that we should be studying, but they obviously don't, since they think they can come with these weak-ass talking points. Then they try to say, oh, we're all about making profit because some people in the movement sell T-shirts. So why is it that every Pan-African festival I went to when I was a Pan-African, so T-shirts, so hats, so books, 
Why were these people trying to make a profit off of their movement? Why have all the great scholars written and sold books? Were they in it for profit? And I'm just kind of ranting, you know, quickly debunking these talking points because I'm not going to debate this dude because it's a waste of time. Then he tries. This, then they're trying to tell this lie that oh, us pan babblers, we have protocols in the international governing board. That's why we don't we don't get divided. If that's the case, dude, what did y'all do about Umar Johnson and his scam ass school? Did y'all issue him a citation? Did you put him in pan babbler jail? There are all kind of divisions of pan Africans. There's socialist pan Africans, nationalist pan Africans, LGBTQ pan Africans, like. Like Talib Kweli, who they also co-signed, the Pan-Africans, because they've co-signed just about any and everyone who's against the movement in order to, to find somebody to latch on because they are so desperate and obsessed with us. Look, they've done, they do, Pan-Africans do one YouTube if they have a channel, one broadcast or write one article about us once a month. I see their tweets. They tweet about us all the time, every day, all day. We don't care about you. And just because we have our own internal issues and we're trying to clean up our own lineage house, don't mean we're going to jump back on the pan babble bandwagon, no matter how much you think you can capitalize on division like an agent. Because I study history and that's exactly what COINTELPRO agents do. They capitalize on divisions that are already there or the seeds of division that are already there. And then they try to further split that, further exploit that division to their own gain. And that's what you're doing no matter how much you try to twist it and flip it. You pan babblers, and that's how I'm going to close this video, destroyed your own credibility by being soft and weak with immigrants who have been disrespecting and, and undermining black Americans for so long, but having all the smoke for ADOS. And that's why I use the screenshot I use, because the brother who challenged me to a, to a debate, this is one of his associates. Look at the difference in the language. This is what he says about uh, a pan uh, about an immigrant who's shitting on black Americans. This is son of Malcolm. He's a close associate of the dude that I am that wants to debate me. He says these are racist myths created by whites about blacks. And he bought it. If he thinks that black people are U.S. and the U.S. are fundamentally different than black people on the continent, that he has been doc indoctrinated by Western propaganda and our miseducation. So this dude is uh, is uneducated. Right. This dude is just uneducated. This immigrant, this African who shitted on black Americans is just uneducated. But listen, listen to how he talks about ADOS. ADOS is fundamentalism. ADOS is zealotry. ADOS is a cult. Just as some Pan-Africans are tolerant of some religions that comprise the Mayafa, so are Pan-Africans that embrace, embrace American identity. We don't agree and all opinions aren't created equal. So this dude is basically talking about how... Um, ADOS is zealotry and occult. See the difference in the strong language. And no, I didn't sit up because I don't have the time to sit up and screenshot every single time I saw a pan babbler show his hypocrisy. But at the same time, I am not going to sit up here and allow you to lie and claim that you've been giving the same smoke to immigrant disrespected black Americans that you did to ADOS because you did it. I saw the evidence every time we presented you with an immigrant disrespecting black Americans. I saw you guys with my own two eyes. So no matter how much you lie about it or delete the tweets, if I tried to go back and search more evidence. I saw your milk toast glossing over, ignoring of their disrespect of us. But you got all the smoke for us for taking the, the matter into our own hands. And you mad because you know that Africans do not buy into Pan Babel. Because they are already connected to their tribe and their lineage. They have been connected to their... And so have Caribbeans. I, as I've already talked about, I'm dating an immigrant. She told me how they talked about how they're different. Every other black culture has been taking pride in their, in their lineage a lot longer than we have. But as soon as we do it, it's a problem. You know why? Because you're dependent on us to be the main audience for pan babblism because other people are too connected to their tribe to take you seriously. That's why no black country has offered refuge to black Americans. And you as a pan babbler who does so much, quote unquote, boots on the ground work, you ain't doing nothing to make that happen. You just crying about ADOS all day, every day. Get off of our N-U-T-S. Get a life. 
We are not going to continue to go back and forth with you over and over. Have fun pan babbling. We're going to have fun doing our lineage. If we're stupid and foolish and, and we're on the wrong path, then let us do that because I'm letting you do your thing. I think you're on the wrong path and you're foolish, but I'm letting you do your thing. So let me do mine. Stop coming over here trying to be a COINTELPRO vulture before you destroy the last shreds of credibility I have left in my soul for pan babblism. Stop trying to capitalize on our issues like a damn COINTELPRO agent. We are trying to deal with white supremacy. You do the same. Deal with white supremacy in your own way and get off of our issues. We are dealing with our internal lineage movement issues. We are not talking about you, so stop talking about us. Get off our backs. Stop acting like an agent. Leave us alone. We don't want to deal with you. You're irrelevant to us. I don't care how much you think you're still relevant. In my mind, you're irrelevant. So leave us alone. But anyway, fam. Um, that's just a quick angry rant because I'm just uh, irritated with the pan babblers and their COINTEL pro like tactics. So um, that's just me kind of going off. But um, anyway, that's another video. So like, share, subscribe and peace. And wait, wait, before I say peace and again, just to reiterate what you see up on the screen cap, even though I didn't spend a lot of time talking about it, is evidence of exactly what happened to what pan babblism did to allow the fertile ground for a movement like ADOS. If you guys had done your job and had checked the xenophobia coming from non-black Americans towards black Americans before we had to, FBA and ADOS would have never come into existence. But because you didn't and you ignore ignored the vulture and disrespect culture coming from black immigrants, now we dealing with it. And we're not going to get off that square just because we got to deal with democratic shields and agents because every black movement has had to deal with division and agents or suspected agents. And if there's not agents, just straight up division. They've all had to deal with it. So anyway, that's another video. Like, share, subscribe. Peace.